uh, China transfer pricing and anti-tax avoidance update in 2015 webinar. Um, I'll be your moderator for today. And um, we will have two main speakers. Uh, one of which is Ling Zhang. She is a transfer pricing associate um, a TP specialist. Uh, she has done uh, her, her master's in finance and investment from the RSM Erasmus University uh, in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And she's now working uh, at TPA for about two, two and a half years. She has, uh, she has uh, uh, participated in global transfer pricing projects for multinationals located in many countries, including a majority of Asian countries. And uh, she is assisting multinational organizations established in China and the Far East. Uh, besides that, we also have Mr. Xi. He is uh, our alliance partner from Minter PQ in Beijing, China, and he will attend at the end of this uh, webinar when there are some questions. So if you have some questions, you can type them in the questions or the, or the chat box. And then we will speak them from out here out, out loud and, and try to answer them. Please uh, do this at the end of the session so we can have a full session first. Then after the presentation, the recording and presentation slides will be available on the tpaglobal.com website after the webinar. And you will receive an, an email when the materials are available for download. Now I give the word to Ling Zhang. Thank you, William I. Uh, good afternoon, or good morning, or maybe good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Ling Zhang from Transfer Pricing Associates, the Netherlands. Uh, together with uh, Zhi Qun Shi from Minter PKU China, we will present uh, China, China Transfer Pricing and Anti-Tax Avoidance Update in year 2014, uh, 2015. Uh, the presentation of today has four parts. The first part is about overview of uh, current Chinese transfer price. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the China Transfer Pricing <laughs> Update uh, webinar. Um, my name is Ilemai, and I'll be your moderator for today. We also have the main speaker, Ling Zhang. Uh, who is an associate at Transfer Pricing uh, uh, Associates. And she, <laughs> she has been working five years here. She has done her master's in uh, finance and investment from the RSM uh, Erasmus University in the Netherlands. And she has participated in global transfer pricing projects for multinationals located in many countries, including a majority of Asian countries. Uh, she is uh, originally from China, so she knows a lot about uh, the Chinese transfer pricing aspects. Um, then we also have Mr. Xi. He is our, our alliance partner from China, from Minter PQ, and he will uh, attend at the end to perhaps answer some questions. Regarding questions, you can type them in your in the questions or the chat box. Uh, we ask you to do that at the end of the webinar. Then uh, the, you will get an email at, uh, when materials, the recording and presentation are available uh, on the TPA Global website and you will receive this email to download these materials at the end of the webinar. Please enjoy it, and I'll give the word to uh, Ling Zhang. Thank you, William I. Uh, good afternoon, or good morning, or good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ling Zhang from TP Amsterdam office. Uh, together with uh, Zhi Qun Shi from Minter PQU China, uh, we will present China transfer pricing and anti-tax avoidance up update in year 2015. Uh, the presentation of today has four parts. The first part is about overview of current Chinese transfer pricing. The second part introduces the transfer pricing changes in practice, especially the changes of uh, outbound payments. The third part presents update of other anti-tax avoidance items. And the fourth part is about two court cases uh, in the end of the presentation, uh, a list of uh, anti-tax avoidance circulars released, especially in these two years, is also attached for your reference, which is uh, uh, Appendix 1. So um, let's uh, start the first part of uh, today's trans uh, presentation. Um, from uh, uh, this table, it shows the data of China anti-tax avoidance during the year 2008 to 2014, since the new corporate income tax law has been implemented, there are uh, three observations from this table. The first one is um, 
between the period year 2008 to 2014, you can see the amount of tax contribution caused by China tax audit has increased dramatically, um, which is the, fir the first column we call tax contribution. And the second observation is Chinese tax authorities urged the enterprises or the multinationals to self-adjust their transfer pricing policy and uh, pay back tax accordingly. Uh, the third uh, observation is uh, regarding the audit transfer pricing cases. The amount of average tax adjustment per case in year 2014 is larger than the previous years. Which is mean, which means the large volume, the large value intercompany transaction in China are high likely to be audited. So, based on our uh, practical experiences, we suggested that the multinationals should pay much attention to their transfer pricing policies and adjust them uh, when necessary. Um, the next slide is. Uh, uh, Based on uh, basically, it's uh, the 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 current uh, actions by Chinese tax authority. Uh, as since the 15 action plan on base erosion and profit shifting were officially released by uh, July 2013, the General Office of the of the State Administration of Taxation, normally we call it SAT, the Chinese tax uh, uh, tax authorities, uh, has. Reiterated its determination to uh, strengthen cooperation with OECD on the BAPS project, and uh, uh, has published its uh, revised plan on SAT Circular Two. The Circular Two, by the way, uh, is the China's major transfer pricing provision. Uh, the draft revision of SAT Circular Two is uh, anticipated uh, anticipated to be released. In the second half of the year 2015, based on um, our internal information, is that the draft uh, revision is already uh, go to part of the organization, but uh, it's not uh, officially released. But we already uh, know there are many changes. Uh, well, uh, to next slide, uh, which is. Um, uh, with respect to this uh, revision draft of Circular 2, uh, we will see the, follow, the following area related to transfer pricing, including arms length principle, uh, transfer pricing methods, documentation, intangible assets between related parties, intercompany service transaction, and advanced pricing arrangement will be uh, further specified and uh, elaborated in this revision draft. Uh, other anti-tax avoidance items, uh, for instance, control of foreign corporations, sin capitalization, cost sharing agreement, OCSA, and uh, general anti-tax avoidance rules uh, will also be more realistic. And these are, this is the Part one of presentation today is just give you the overview of current uh, Chinese transfer pricing. And the second part, um, we are um, mainly introducing the transfer pricing changes in practice, which may uh, already uh, uh, influence your business or transfer pricing uh, practice in China. So, yeah. So, the uh, uh, Slide nine, which is uh, regard to submitted tax return disclosures and transfer pricing reports, Chinese tax authorities will strengthen the investigation of affiliated transactions. The enterprise and its affiliated parties, uh, as well as other enterprises in relation to the affiliated transactions. This investigation is prim primarily to check whether the data is complete and all the information is accurate. Um, tax authorities will also compare the description dis differences between the related party disclosures and follow-up transfer pricing reports. Uh, in addition, the differences of transfer pricing methods 
and the profit levels between the audit year and the previous years will also be compared by tax authorities. Um, the next slide, this is basically, uh, the, this information are, are from uh, Circular Shui Zong Ban San 2014, number 146, because uh, on 29 July 2014, SAT released an internal notice, notification, which is the, the number 146, to urge tax authorities at all levels in China to carry out uh, extensive tax investigations on substantial amounts of royalties payments made by the domestic enterprise to their related parties, especially from year 2004 to year 2013. Uh, uh, here, we partic uh, um, particularly mention the following intercompany royalty payments are the primary targets. Uh, we can see there are four uh, categories of uh, intercompany royalty payments. First one is uh, uh, the royalties paid to entities located in tax havens. Uh, this is one out of four primary targets. The second one is royalties paid to overseas related parties. Uh, that related party perform no or limited functions or substance. The third um, one is a significant amount of royalties paid for intellectual property or IP to which the payer made a significant contribution. And the fourth one is the significant amount of royalties paid for IP with decline or impaired value. Um, in conclusion, it's all these four uh, types of royalties payment to um, uh, to the over uh, to the related overseas party will be primary targets uh, by the Chinese tax authorities. Uh, the following slides is uh, is uh, regarding the uh, announcement number sixteen, which is uh, re which is released on March eighteen, two thousand fifteen. Um, this uh, this circular states that the outbound payments to overseas related parties should follow the arm's length principle and also uh, specifies uh, various circumstances where the payments, service fees, or royalties paid to um, overseas related parties will not be deductible for corporate income tax purposes. Uh, royalties paid to uh, an overseas related party which only owns the legal rights of the intangible assets, but have, but having no contribution to its value creation, is not in compliance with arms length principle. Therefore, it is not deductible for corporate income tax purposes. Uh, we also here we also list uh, six situations uh, where the service fee payments to overseas related parties are not deducted are not deductible for corporate income tax purposes. Um, these are also from uh, circular uh, number 16, especially article 4. So um, you see, we will see the first situation is uh, services that are unrelated to the functions and the risks borne by the enterprise or operation of the enterprise. Uh, for example, uh, various um, advisory and legal services provided by a parent company uh, may indeed grant some benefits to manufacturing subsidiary in China, for, for instance. However, uh, these high-ended services, like uh, advisory or legal services, may not be needed from, uh, the, per 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 from the perspective of the subsidiary in China based on its uh, functions and the cost-benefit analysis. So these kind of services are uh, not deductible. The second situation is uh, intra-group services uh, relating to the protection of the investment interest of the direct or indirect investor of the enterprise, including control, management, supervising activities for the enterprise. Um, Generally, this situation mainly focuses on shareholder activities. 
from our practical experiences, the Chinese tax authorities' interpretation of shareholder activities has been more stringent than what is generally regarded as shareholder activities under the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. The third situation is um, uh, intra-group services that uh, have already been purchased from a third party or have been undertaken by the enterprise itself. Um, this situation refer, refers to duplicative activities, uh, which are also covered under Circular uh, 146 and uh, also in the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. However, um, the OECD transfer pricing guidelines also provide two um, exceptions when determining if a service is duplicative. It uh, is uncertain whether China tax authorities will accept the exceptions described in the OECD transfer pricing guidelines when they are determining whether a service provided to the taxpayer is duplicated or not. The, the fourth situation is the services where the enterprise obtains additional benefits solely for being part of a corporate group, and the enterprise had not received any specific services from related party within the group. This situation is uh, similar to the concept of uh, incidental benefits and uh, passive association, which are discussed in the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. Uh, how and when um, the China tax authorities determine that this situation arises will be of interest, as it is the first time that uh, this language, the Chinese, has appeared on any official China tax, China tax legislation or guideline. It is uncertain um, how the China tax authorities will interpret this article in practice. The fifth situation is services that have been remunerated through payments for other related party transactions. This situation refers to the remuneration test, which is consistent with the provision set in Circular 146. The last situation uh, is other services that have not provided uh, the enterprise with any direct or indirect uh, economic benefits. This situation can be regarded as a catch call clause to capture all the other situations where um, the services fee payments may have been made for non beneficial services and which would not be deductible for corporate income tax purposes. These are the second part of today's presentation, and we are just to interpret and also adding some uh, real uh, uh, examples uh, for related to the transfer price, transfer pricing charges uh, changes in China, and the the third part is um, of t third part of today's presentation is re about other uh, anti tax avoidance items in China. Um, uh, And uh, basically, these uh, uh, other anti-tax avoidance items, including the cost sharing arrangement, or CSA, we normally call, and the latest the rules of uh, general anti-tax avoidance in China. So uh, in order to implement, uh, implement circular um, uh, Guofa uh, 2015 number 27, or we can call circular number 27, which uh, um, canceled the examination and the approval requirements regarding whether uh, CSA of enterprise is based on the arm's length principle. China Tax Authority released the SAT announcement uh, number 45 we, um, to regulate the administration of the CSAs. So uh, there are four, uh, we believe there are four uh, specific requirements 
um, uh, taxpayer need to be need to pay much attention. The first uh, 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 first thing is the documentation requirements upon conclusion or adjustment of the CSA, because and the announcement forty five requires an enterprise to submit a copy of a CSA to its uh, supervising tax authority within 30 days of a conclusion or adjustment of the CSA with its related parties. So according to the interpretation of announcement 45 from the SAT, uh, enterprise would be considered as, have, as having conducted the related party transaction once it uh, concludes uh, CSA with its related parties. The enterprise thereby is required to submit an annual reporting form for its related party transactions when performing annual corporate income tax filing. Regardless of uh, the CSA is executed or not. Uh, the second uh, situation, the uh, second requirement is there's uh, changes is no approval requirement for execution of a CSA. No examination of uh, approval are required for the execution of a CSA of an enterprise. Uh, tax authorities will strengthen follow-up administration on CSAs. If a CSA is not based on the arm's length principle uh, in China and uh, the cost-benefit matching principle, uh, the Chinese tax authorities could initiate procedures for special tax investigation and adjustment. The third is, uh, is about compensating adjustments during the execution of a CSA. Uh, during uh, the execution of a CSA, uh, enterprises should make uh, compensating adjustments according to the act actual situation. If the benefits uh, actually earned are not matching with the cost shared. If the participants fail to make a compensating adjustment, the Chinese tax authorities could uh, also initiate procedures for special tax investigation and adjustment. The third is the it's about effective date. Uh, announcement 45 will come into effect on 16 July 2015 and replace Article 69 of Circular Guo uh, Shui Fa number two. Because, uh, uh, for example, uh, enterprises should report level by level to the SAT for record filing purposes within 30 days after concluding a CSA. A tax authorities' determination for whether the CSA is based on an arm's length principle should be reported to the SAT for review and approval. Um, uh, we advise uh, um, enterprises that have concluded CSAs or uh, if you are considering concluding a CSA with the, your related parties should study announcement 45 and comply with the documentation requirements if applicable. Um, uh, we suggest our client be uh, cautious about the special tax investigation and adjustment applicable to non-compliant compliant CSAs. The taxpayers, of course, uh, are strongly urged to review their CSAs to avoid such relevant risks. Next slide is uh, we um, list the two uh, important uh, circulars. Uh, circular SAT order 2014 number 32 uh, released in December 2014 uh, clarifies the measures for the administration of general anti-tax avoidance. And uh, cir num circular number seven, um, which is released on February 3, uh, 2014, this year, 2015, this year. Uh, the announcement uh, is concerning several matters 
relating to corporate income tax on indirect transfer of uh, properties by non-tax residents enterprise, particular, particular uh, Article 11 of this announcement introduces uh, rules of investigation and adjustment for indirect transfer taxable income in China. So these are, this is the third part of today's presentation. Uh, it's more like uh, from a theoretical, uh, from a, uh, regulation itself and also the, the changes in practical. We, uh, we give the broad introdu introducing. Um, and the fourth part of today's presentation, uh, which is we specially selected two court cases. Um, the case one is the single largest transfer pricing adjustment to cross-border services in China, uh, according to the Chinese taxation news newspaper. And uh, his two is China Tax Authority um, disallowed all the royalties paid to an uh, intellectual property holding company, which is registered in tax havens. Um, so let's start from the first case. Uh, the background of this case is uh, on January 20, uh, 2014. The China Tax Asian News reported that uh, the Xiamen State Tax Bureau, which is the local tax authority in China, uh, the single largest transfer pricing adjustment to cross-border service mm -hmm. fees and uh, access the more than RMB 800 million in taxes and the interest, which is uh, approximately more than uh, USD dollar 130 million um, on a fortune 500 multinationals to Chinese subsidiaries. According to the uh, report, the two Chinese subsidiaries, which were incorporated in year 1998, and the year 2004 in Xiamen, China, its south part of China, uh, has gradually increasing sales revenue, but uh, significantly decrease, decreasing profit since year 2008. Uh, there, um, these two Chinese subsidiaries uh, financial reports showed that the decrease of in, pre, in profits was mainly due to um, uh, Chinese RMB 3.8 billion, which is approximately US dollar US dollar 620 million in cross-border service fees paid to a Singapore-related party um, between year 2008 and 2010. The local tax authority uh, started a transfer pricing investigation in uh, May 2010. And uh, in the end, they reached uh, a settlement agreement with the two Chinese subsidiaries for the transfer pricing adjustment in a year late 2013. So uh, during this um, uh, transfer pricing investigation, the local tax authority uncovered a number of uh, inconsistencies in how uh, how service pay allocations were made. Uh, the tax authority found that the multinational uh, allocated global service costs to the Singapore entity, uh, which was the global operation center of the corporation, based uh, on the number of employees. However, uh, the Singapore entity then allocated uh, the cost to the two Chinese subsidiaries is based on revenue rather than number of uh, employees has already been established by uh, applied by the Singapore entity. So um, second uh, is uh, the multinationals use uh, the global cost pool uh, rather than the Singapore's entity's cost pool to allocate a significant amount of R and D cost uh, despite their not having legal or economic ownership over the intellectual property that um, uh, result from the R&D services. So based on these three, uh, three uh, uh, findings, 
the local tax authority in China uh, cha challenged the service fee allocation and uh, concluded that the disproportionate cost had been allocated to the Chinese subsidiaries. Therefore, they need to pay back the, yeah. So what we learned from this case is that uh, the multinationals investing in China need to be um, carefully reviewing their intergroup service arrangements with the Chinese subsidiaries. And also need to be cautious, pre, uh, prepare the transfer pricing documentation to uh, support an arm length, arm's length basis to the remuneration in those arrangements. This is the first uh, case we selected. And uh, the second court case is um, uh, on May. It's uh, also from China Taxation News. Uh, it is on. It was on May 14, 2014. Uh, the news reported that the Chengdu State Tax Bureau, which is another um, a local tax authority from China, uh, made a transfer pricing adjustment to deny a tax deduction of uh, approximately RMB Chinese RMB 100 million, uh, which is around the USD dollars 16 million. Uh, claimed for trademark royalty payments and uh, then collected Chinese RMB 23 million around the USD dollar 3.8 million in uh, corporate income tax from a foreign invested enterprise uh, engaged in the sale of luxury uh, products. We can call this uh, foreign invested enterprise in, uh, is company A in China. So uh, during the review of the of a company, A's tax clearance certificate application in year uh, in early of year 2013, the local tax authority um, discovered that the company company A uh, paid significant royalties to its list party. Um, uh, let's call it company B. Uh, company B is incorporated in British Virgin Islands. Uh, it is also the owner, uh, the licensor. Uh, according to the report, the local tax authority were uh, skeptical of the arrangement because it fits from company A in China to company B in British Virgin Islands, which is well-known um, tax haven. Uh, uh, while uh, sim sim um, uh, simultaneously enabling company A in China to avoid Chinese taxation. Consequently, the local tax authority uh, conducted a transfer pricing audit on the company A. So during the audit, the local tax authority discovered uh, four negative factors that uh, indicated a tax avoidance scheme. Uh, the first uh, um, negative factor is the company A did not submit the transfer pricing documentation for the related transaction, transaction uh, which is a trademark licensing agreement to the tax authority. The second uh, factor is the legal owner of the trademark was located in a tax haven. And the third is uh, company A's sales profit margin was low uh, based on Chinese comparables from uh, other um, uh, cities, which is similar to the local city. Uh, for example, the other cities including Chengdu, Nanjing, Wuhan, and other cities. And the, four, uh, the fourth factor, and also the mo most important factor, is uh, the local tax authority found that uh, company A had made a significant contribution to the trademark value uh, through many years of uh, marketing activities. Therefore, uh, the local tax authorities uh, conclude, concluded that uh, the profit arising from the value of the trademark should be returned, uh, should be retained by company A. And the company A should not pay any royalties to the licensor uh, in um, tax haven, 
in accordance with the principle of matching expenditure and benefits. So from uh, this uh, court case uh, highlight the need for careful planning of cross-border intellectual property transactions. Multinationals, uh, again, multinationals doing business in China may need to carefully review whether their royalties are charged at arm's length um, based um, in accordance with Chinese transfer pricing rules. In addition, if uh, the Chinese affiliate performs any marketing or advising functions, the multinationals should fully compens uh, compensate uh, the Chinese affiliate with a profit margin consistent with the uh, arms length transaction. This is, is the second uh, second court case of today's presentation. So, as I said in the beginning, the Appendix A, we uh, listed the, all the released anti-tax avoidance circulars since the year 2014. Uh, if you want to uh, familiar with these uh, changes or uh, latest uh, rules, you can uh, download and uh, for self study. Yeah, of course, um, these are uh, all in English. So basically, that's all today's presentation, and uh, let's go to Q and A part. Thanks everyone for listening so far. We have a question from the audience. Uh, someone is asking if uh, is the PRC regarding Hong Kong a tax haven? Um, Zhiqun, can you answer this question? Uh, OK. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Zhiqun from China. And uh, recently, the PRC SAT uh, emphasized again that Hong Kong is not the tax haven during the international tax structure. OK, thank you. If there are any more questions, please uh, type them now. We have another uh, question. Uh, in the first court case that uh, we mentioned uh, uh, cost allocation methods, uh, the impression is that the Chinese tax authorities do not like or accept indirect allocation methods at all. Uh, someone is asking if this is correct. Well, based on my uh, experience, this is not like uh, dislike in direct location. I mean, as long as this uh, location method is consistent and is uh, fair to based on the functions and the risk, so it should be acceptable. Unless, Zhiqian, you have different uh, opinions? Mm. Uh, to be honest, the, the, the Tax of tax authorities in China, they don't like that the multinational companies, uh, you know, make some tax discrimination, make some discrimination rules for the allocation method. So they thought that maybe all the uh, entities in the group should be treated uh, should be treated equally, especially for China. Thank you. We have another question. Uh, is the level of tax at the recipient of royalties paid by a PRC connected entity relevant? Thinking of low taxation due to a patent box regime. I'm not uh, familiar with this uh, patent box regime. Uh, maybe Jiqian, it's better you answer this question. Uh, I'm sorry, can I repeat the question again? Maybe some, maybe yes, because, yeah, because of the online. Is the level of tax at the recipient of royalties paid by a PRC connected entity uh, relevant? 
by a PRC connected entity relevant. In Chinese. Or maybe it's um, less. Maybe we can talk this uh, question uh, later after this presentation because I also not. I need to check that also. Okay. We have another question. Uh, someone is asking if uh, the OECD's country by country reporting applies in, to China. Yeah, I, I think, uh, uh, yeah, because uh, recently there's a couple of uh, European countries already applied the C by C report. I think as also I mentioned in earlier, of, uh, earlier today's slide, which is the second uh, the num circular grocery file number two will be revised in this uh, uh, draft revision, which is uh, uh, Chinese tech authority going to Strengthen their cooperation with the OECD, uh, especially the BAPS projects. Yes, the C they will make uh, significant changes. Um, but regarding when and to apply CBC report, I am not. Uh, it's not be closed yet. Okay. Uh, um, what are the transfer pricing rules that are impacting Hong Kong operations? Zhichun, are you, uh, can you explain this? Transfer pricing rules impact on Hong Kong operations, if that is happening at all. Hi, Zhichun, can you hear us? Sorry, I think that he got a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to the uh, to another question. Uh, do royalty hello, agreements? Hello. Oh, can you hear the previous question regarding Hong Kong uh, Chinese transfer pricing uh, rules affect the Hong Kong operations? Oh, uh, I know. I, okay, I I heard the questions, and uh, you just want to actually tell now. There's a lot of. Uh, you may find that the, a lot of the transfer pricing cases, I mean the uh, investigation cases, uh, you, may, you can find a very interesting uh, phenomenon that uh, many uh, structures uh, in the, in many tech structures in the DB cases, uh, they used the Hong Kong as a company, as a holding company. So we find that now the SAT, they pay a lot of attention to the to the um, multinational groups who have the holding, uh, who uh, have or has the holding com holding structures through the HK, I mean Hong Kong. So uh, I should say maybe the Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong authority, tax tax authorities, they are uh, they cooperate with uh, China SAT. Um, you know, the relationship is very good. So uh, the SAT in China, they can. Uh, Get enough or you know, acquire enough uh, information for the holding structures. Okay. Then we have another question: uh, Do royalty agreements have to have a declining rate? Uh, okay. I I'll, maybe I'll answer this question. The, this this question is so huge, you know. I mean, it depends on the you know the industry. I mean, the royalties industry. So some kind of uh, royalties, they are, they don't need to have decline a rate, but others, they have to you know to follow the arms race first of all. So maybe yeah. the third. Do you perhaps know what which kind of industries that are? Uh, see, like maybe you are have a software. 
and uh, you just license it to uh, anything in China. So you cannot, you know, get the loyalty fee rate like in 10 years or for the same loyalty rate. That's not allowed. It allowed. Uh, we have another question, Mr. Zhu, may, maybe you can answer this one as well. If a Chinese distribution company is paying royalties based on third-party sales, can there be, be issues with customs, for example, uh, license fee to be included on important goods? Hi, Jolene. Yes, uh, we, will, we will repeat again. If a Chinese distribution company is paying royalties based on third-party sales, uh, can there be issues with customs? For example, uh, a license fee to be included uh, on imported goods. Uh, I should say it, it, dep it depends. I should say it, it depends. Okay, have you ever um, dealing with such a distribution company? However, it's a, yes, it's a well, well, very simple functions, but they don't have uh, issues on the import goods. Do you have ever uh, dealing with that uh, cases? Uh, you mean just a um, distribution center in China? And uh, the single single fun with single yeah, function, single function, but uh, they are they are not uh, pay they pay the royalty to the third party, but not a uh, uh, related party. And do they yes. still have uh, issues regarding customs? Uh, it's about a cost. This is a custom question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I think so. It's, yeah, it's in China. It's more like in custom department handling. Yes, again, because in in China they have to you know the custom authorities and uh, the tax authorities they are you know very uh, separated two authorities and uh, the actually the the custom authorities they do not cooperate with the tax authorities that often. So uh, as I know the tech, uh, the custom authorities they are very strict with. Uh, Import a price. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no more uh, questions coming in, so let's uh, end this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you all for uh, participating. Uh, I hope you, it was a, a useful uh, webinar for you. And um, maybe we, see, we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.